recognize Representative Greg Stubbe of Florida, who's the ranking a member of the Subcommittee on the Middle East, North Africa, and Global Counterterrorism for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Blinken, even in your opening statement, you can't be honest with the American people. You stated, and I quote, that by January 2021, the Taliban was in its strongest military position since 9-11. I'm pretty sure their strongest military position has been during your entire administration, not prior to it. In fact, their strongest military position since the towers were hit in 2001 was this past September 11th, the 20th anniversary, all of which happened on your watch, not your predecessors. In fact, on April 27th of this year, days before the original deadline negotiated by the Trump administration that you and the Biden administration violated, the Taliban controlled 77 districts in Afghanistan. The Afghan government controlled 129, and there were 194 contested districts. By August 15th, while you and Biden were on vacation, the Taliban had taken and controlled 304 districts, and the government only controlled 37. From May to August of this year, while you, the Department of Defense, and the President did absolutely nothing, the Taliban gained 227 districts in Afghanistan in just four months. You can't claim ignorance to what was going on there, and you can't blame the Trump administration for your failure. I served in Iraq, and I'm well aware of our capabilities. Your administration in the White House was seeing in real time what was happening in Afghanistan, and you did absolutely nothing to stop it. In fact, you did what you could to conceal the facts. Biden himself tried to get President Ghani to lie about what was happening on the ground. Biden told Ghani that, quote, the perception around the world and in parts of Afghanistan, I believe, is that things aren't going well in terms of the fight against the Taliban. And there's a need, whether it's true or not, there's a need to project a different picture. That was on July 23rd, before all of you went on vacation. So you knew exactly what was going on there and did nothing to start moving our people out or our SIVs out until it was too late and the Taliban controlled the entire nation. You earlier stated under questioning today, and I quote, we inherited a deadline, not a plan. Yet you didn't even follow the deadline that you cascade as something you couldn't do, do anything about. This whole blaming the Trump administration for everything that's happened in Afghanistan is a disgrace. You are the Secretary of State, and Biden has been the Commander in Chief since January, not Trump. You and the administration saw what was happening in Afghanistan, and you had the ability to deal with it, not Trump. You were responsible for the assets on the ground, and you were responsible for getting our people out. So I know how you, Biden, and other Democrats want nothing more than to blame Trump for all of the problems that you have created, but the responsibility for all of this lies squarely on your shoulders and in the lap of President Biden. Then after Kabul fell, your leadership completely and utterly failed not only our citizens on the ground, but our allies that we've worked with for 20 years. First, your direction was shelter in place. Then it was make your way to the airport, but we can't guarantee your safety on the way there. Then it was shelter in place. Then it was come to the gates. Then it was leave the gates. While all of this was happening, you're handing our list of citizens and Afghan SIVs to the Taliban, a globally recognized terrorist organization, because you were unwilling to go in and get the citizens and SIVs stuck behind enemy lines out. And as we sit here today, we still have citizens and SIVs stuck in Taliban hands. Despite Biden promising to stay and get them all out, and thanks to you, our enemy knows exactly who they are and how to find them. And you describe this, and I quote, as an extraordinary effort. I would certainly not describe the deaths of 13 US service members, the deaths of hundreds of Afghans, and the fact that we still have citizens and SIVs stuck behind enemy lines, while the Taliban, Al Qaeda, and ISIS-K go door to door, hunting them down, as an extraordinary effort. And if all that wasn't bad enough, you spit in the eye of every single service member who served on the war on terror for the last 20 years by even considering recognizing the Taliban, who we have fought against for 20 years as a legitimate government. And not only recognize them, but do absolutely nothing while the Taliban takes control of $90 billion worth of military aircraft, Humvees, weapons, night vision goggles, uniforms, ammunitions, and Blackhawks. And after we've rolled over and handed all that to them, you announced today with great fanfare and great pride that you are providing $64 million in humanitarian assistance to the people of Afghanistan. You can't even get our people out of the country, but we and the American people are to believe that $64 million of our tax dollars that's to be sent to Afghanistan won't, won't fall in the hands of the Taliban or other terrorist organizations who you are relying upon 
to get our people out of the airport. Your legacy will be the Taliban flying our Black Hawk over Kabul while someone, maybe a U.S. citizen, hangs from a rope by his neck. And while this is happening, you are saying that you are working diplomatically with the Taliban. The gentleman's time has expired. I now recognize.